Go to the Tools panel of Affinity Photo and select the Paintbrush tool. Now I've got a color here of black. Also, I'm going to go over here to the Brushes panel and select a Brush. That's View Menu and Studio and Brushes. So you've got Brush there, and that's in the Oil section. I'm simply just going to apply it like that. Now it's a layer. You can see over here, Pixel Layer has been created. Well, what you can do, you can go to Select, and you can Selection from Layer. So it's now nicely selected. You can see a selection all the way around that. And I can now go over here again with the brush. So with the brush selected, I can change the color. Maybe create three or four different layers of colors. Now I'm gonna go for some red. You can see the brush stroke applied there. And of course you can vary. You don't have to use the same brush. Maybe select a different brush. Perfectly reasonable, just always select that one as well. And apply that. Just add a variety of different designs there. And again, if you want to, change the color maybe to green. You could go for blue, whatever. You can see you've got your design there. Now what I can then do, I can copy and paste this. And I'm just going to quickly go to edit and, and again it's still selected. So edit and copy. And I can do edit and paste inside. That's the key thing, paste inside. So paste inside puts it inside as a child of this pixel layer, the parent. Now this child can be moved around. Now I can deselect that now, I don't need that selected, but I can go with there and I can move that around. You can see the design there. What I can also do is go to effects and I can go maybe add 3D or bevels or, or maybe give sort of a shadow as well. And you can see the effect there. And you can change profile and then other things if you wish. Click close. With that, what you can do, you can hold down the alter option key, it's still a layer. So again, duplicate that design, you can resize it, and you can see what happens. You end up with these multiple sort of brush strokes within a brush stroke. So you can create some very interesting combination, and you can always rotate the design. You can also go, if you want to, filters and distort and deform. So you can just deform that design, and that's the one inside there, it's not outside. So it won't go outside that brush stroke, it's inside that parent. So you can create all kinds of distortions there to create very unusual brushes. You can also now go to the top one and you can distort that as well. So filters, go to distort and deform. And you can go down there, add a few pins, not too many, up to you. And then you can see as you move that around that you might end up losing, obviously you can go too far and you end up with a sort of weird ledge there. Up to you. And you can go outside as well and move that in so you can get some unusual designs there. And you can always undo. So if you don't like it, always undo. Again, with that selected, you can also add effects to that. So go to 3D, and then you can see you can add a 3D and you've got the option here for more profiles. So you can select different profiles, just go with the same basic profile or remove profile, up to you, close. Now with this design, again, you can do exactly the same as before. You can copy and paste them. So again, edit, copy, or hold down the alter option key and duplicate the design. Again, duplicate that and you can resize that design. You can also, if you want to, lock the child so you can just move it around inside. So if you say lock children there, you can move that around. You can see the underline sort of doesn't move in the same way. It's sort of stuck there. So I'm just gonna lock children there. Now I've got that design there. What I want, I want the whole thing as a brush stroke. I'm just going to go down to a layer and I'm going to go for merge visible. So merge visible, it's all been merged into one single one. Now I'm just going to remove these. I always find it confusing to work with the other ones. It's a pity you can't sort of hide them in a different way, but however, got that just one layer now. That's all I want. And I can still distort that one if you want as well. So filter, distort and deform. And again, you can manipulate that further, maybe add some additional pins there and just distort it. Avoid going over the edge, because sometimes what happens, it just cuts off. And that's not particularly what you want, because the brush will look very odd, because that's what I want to do now. I want to create a brush. So I'm just going to, but you can really create some very unusual sort of painted brush designs. You can get, look, all this lovely oozing paint as if it's a sort of like a paintbrush has been. So, well, once you've done that, click apply. Now with that design now, what I can do, I can select it. So select and go down to, again, selection from layer. It's just a pixel layer selected, all that's been selected. 
And now I'm going to brushes again. So here's the brushes. Now you could change the category. I'm not going to do that. You can see some I've got down there already. What you can do, you've got right side menu just up here. And there's an option here, new brush from selection. So new brush from selection. And that's been added there. So now let's just remove this. Don't want it anymore. Get rid of the selection as well. Don't want that because it will limit it. And then I can select that. Go down to the brush. So there's the brush selected there. Now I'm using a pen, of course. So you can see the effect there. And you can see it just applied across the image. Now let's just move that brush there out of the way. And of course, you can modify other settings as well. Change it. You can even maybe use it with symmetry. Probably being a bit slow. But you can see what happens. The general response there. You can fill the screen very rapidly with that. However, what you can also do is the brushes with this image brush. Double click there. And you can see your image brush there. And you can go over here to general. You can change the size, hardness, spacing. So you can reduce it down to more of a sort of... You can just quickly see the res result there. Though obviously, it's a little bit of a slight delay there and also you can go to rotation so if you want to you can change the angle but you can also go to dynamics which is even more important because now what you can do is rotation jitter and you can get this lovely jitter effect let's just move this out of the way so you can see the design and then obviously spark very quickly it's uh, added across the image now maybe if you don't want to add it so fast you can always, of course, change the spacing. So let's just go back, general, and go for spacing, maybe a bit further out there, so you can get a more sort of slower response. Otherwise, it just fills the screen too rapidly. Now, what you can also do, you can obviously not use the brush, the pen. You can use the mouse. I find sometimes when it's just applying dabs, it's easier just to apply with the mouse. than. And of course, you can also vary the size just as well. So you can make small, big, tiny, etc. Sometimes it can get a bit there. Or maybe go for random. And you can create very small there. You can also add some colour into the design as well. Simply go over here to the brushes and double click again that brush. Go to the dynamic section and go to hue jitter, saturation jitter and luminosity and just change those settings. Maybe make them 65, 70% and random. Close. And then just apply it. Now I'm using again an art pad and pen makes it much easier and you can apply the brush and you can see a variety of different colors can be applied across the screen. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.